I don't think there's an absolute definition of good health. It's a very individual matter. It comes down to whether one can lead the proverbial life well lived, as personally defined. All of us face significant health care uh, problems at one time or another in our lives. The challenge is to prevent or manage these problems as best as possible so that hopefully one can do the things that matter the most to oneself. On the providing side, it's a great thing to be able to help another human being. On the receiving side, I've certainly experienced uh, illness myself or seen it close at hand in friends or family members, and I know its impact, and I know the relief associated with its amelioration. I've also experienced healthcare issues, such as not having enough information about what's going on or why, and I know how frustrating that can be. I try to keep these personal experiences firmly in mind in guiding my own practice of medicine or in setting expectations for the neurologist under my direction. Are we doing our very best? Are we providing our patients with the best help we can in the most understanding way? I find the three core missions of academic medicine, patient care, research, and teaching, all to be individually rewarding and truly interlinked. My own career has focused on the research side, specifically on finding ways to uh, protect the brain or spinal cord against insults like stroke or trauma. And while this research has taken place in laboratories rather than uh, in hospitals, it has always been inspired by my clinical experiences. I enjoy the thrill of the chase, the intellectual puzzle solving aspects, as well as the sense of purpose associated with medical research. I've also uh, been truly proud of the uh, more than 50 uh, research fellows that I've personally trained in my own laboratory, or the larger number of neurology residents and fellows whose training I've overseen in academic departments of neurology here at Stony Brook or elsewhere. I personally would like to see a breakthrough treatment for stroke in the area of neuroprotection. Stroke remains a leading cause of death in America and in the world. There have been recent uh, exciting advances in surgical treatments for certain types of stroke, opening up blocked cerebral arteries. But these surgical treatments can only be administered to a minority of stroke patients with certain types of stroke. A neuroprotective drug treatment that would reduce the vulnerability of brain tissue to a given uh, stroke insult, would re reduce the amount of brain tissue that dies following a given stroke, would be additive with these surgical therapies and could potentially be administered to a larger number of people. I hope to do my part to making the world a healthier place.